Hello everybody, this is Dr. Nadeem and we are with Neelam Path Lectures, the Pursue series. All our lectures are available on YouTube. We have a Telegram group for accessing all the lecture related information. A Google Drive where the PDF of all lectures are available. And these are the disclaimers. We are with Phase 3 which is Recorded Pathology Lectures. And today we have Pursue 26P Dermatopathology which is dealing with fungal infections. And we are streaming from Bardawan Medical College and Hospital, Purbo Bardawan, West Bengal. To speak on today's topic, we have Dr. Anup Kumar Boler, who is an MBBS and MD pathology. He is a professor of pathology at the Bardawan Medical College, Purbo Bardawan, with special interest in cytopathology and histopathology. He has got more than 17 years of experience in teaching in various medical colleges of West Bengal, with multiple publications in national and international journals. He's also an executive committee member of the West Bengal Cytological, Cytological Society, a division of ISC. I would request Dr. Anup Kumar Boler to start his lecture on fungal infections. Over to you, sir. Hello. Good evening, everyone. My topic of today's discussion is dermal infection fungal in phase 3, pursu 26P. At the outset, I thank Dr. S. M. Nadim, sir, founder and course coordinator of Neelam Path Lecture for his invitation to me to deliver this lecture on dermatopathology. Now, what are the different causes of cutaneous infection? The causes of cutaneous infection ranges from bacterial, fungal, parasitic, viral to specific bacteria like Mycobacterium tuberculosis, Mycobacterium leprae, etc. Cutaneous fungal infection is not uncommon and the diagnosis of Cutaneous fungal infection is always challenging, not only because of their varied clinical presentation, but also because of non-availability of reliable serological tests, varied histomorphologic pattern, and development of similar histomorphologic pattern by other non-fungal causative organisms. As we, the pathologists, are mostly used to examine the histomorphology in tissue section and to some extent in fungal KOH preparation, scrape smear of uh, skin ulcers, or aspirated material from deep dermal or subcutaneous abscesses, proper identification of exact pattern of tissue reaction and fungal elements are crucial for us for the diagnosis. Now let's get familiar with some commonly used terminology related to fungal infection. So, our hyphae are elongated filamentous form of fungi. Mycelium are intertwining mass of hyphae. Yeasts are round to oval fungal forms that rep reproduce by budding or blastogenesis. Grains are dense accumulation of micro colonies of fungi or bacteria found in mycetoma. And Dimet dementitious fungi are molds or yeast with melanin pigment production in their wall found in few hypomycosis and chromomycosis. Dimorphic are fungus that grows in more than one form that is mold, yeast, sclerotic bodies, sulfur grains, spherules with endospores, etc. Usually they are found in histoplasmosis, coccoidomycosis, blastomycosis, and paracoccoidomycosis. Now, what should be the rational approach to the diagnosis? As I have told that we, the pathologists, are mostly depending on the histomorphological pattern appreciation and also appreciation of proper fungus, fungal elements. So, we should have a rational approach to the diagnosis. First of all, which uh, is the recognition of findings consistent with infection, which can range from presence of acute inflammatory to even absence of visible inflammatory response. Second thing is identification of histologic pattern of changes suggesting the nature of infecting organism, like uh, necrotizing granuloma, which can be found in mycobacterial infection as well as in fungal infection. And then recognition of specific infections like identification of yeasts, yeast-like bodies, pseudohyphae or hyphae if they are present in the site of lesion in our and available in tissue section 
or aspirated material and subsequent performance of tests particularly the special stains like pass diastase pass bromories methanamine silver that is gms nitrate gimsa gram stain silver fontana mason music carmine alcyon blue indian ink and acid fat stain etc immune based demonstration of spores in the tissue section by direct immunofluorescence or immunoperoxidase after application of corresponding antisida are of value particularly in blastomycetes dermatitis sporothrix cryptococcus neoformans candida albicans aspergillus histoplasma capsulatum etc pcr based amplification of nail plate biopsy can be done for onychomycosis this could identify individual species but contaminant may cause false positive results now what are the different tissue response in fungal infection which we are supposed to identify so there may be acute inflammatory response which usually found in early stage there may be granuloma formation which can be either necrotizing or non necrotizing there may be mixed inflammation like presence of simultaneous presence of acute inflammation as well as granulomas necrotizing granulomas a special type of necrotizing granuloma that is center filled with neutrophils uh in contrast to the caseous necrosis or other necrotic material uh, which usually found in tuberculosis here uh, the center is filled with neutrophils which is sometimes called pyogenic granuloma which is highly suggestive of fungal infection like few hyphomycosis and chromoblastomycosis sometimes there may be invasion of the vascular arterial wall with subsequent vascular occlusion and thrombosis caused by fungus belonging to class zygomyces or aspergillus in superficial dermatomycosis different form of fungi identified in keratin layer of epidermis or hair follicle and variable tissue reaction in epidermis and follicular epithelium ranging from no response to very mild focal spongiosis or more exuberant uh, inflammation or chronic spongiotic or psoriasiform pattern may be found superficial dermal lymphocyte or mixed inflammatory infiltration are also also present uh, in many cases in deep dermal fungal infection you can get pseudo epithelomatous hyperplasia and occasional dermal fibrosis which is usually found in coccydeidomycosis and blastomycosis epidermal thinning is a feature of histoplasma infection and lobo loboi infection sometimes prominent microabscess formation can be found in disseminated candidiasis gelatinous or granulomatous uh, reaction is very characteristic of cryptococcosis so from this above finding we can have a rational approach uh, to the to come to the diagnosis now coming to the superficial dermatomycosis so superficial dermatomycosis is a fungal infection affecting the superficial part of skin that is the keratinous layer uh, epidermis and hair the causative organisms are dermatophytes melasesia farfar candida species cladosporium etc and let us have a, a overview of uh, different dermatophytomycosis and its fungal uh, morphology so when the disease is dermatophytosis that is the superficial dermatomycosis caused by dermatophytes so we get minimal to spongiotic psoriasiform pustule or folliculitis pattern of mixed inflammatory infiltrate and the fungal morphology are usually hyphae that is uh, one to two micron uh, septed hyphae in stratum corneum okay, and occasionally some chains of spores may be found in pityriasis versicolor there may be slight hyperkeratosis and in melasesia or pityriasporum folliculitis plugged sometimes ruptured follicle with follicular and perifollicular mixed inflammatory infiltrate may be found 
in both these cases the organism a fungal organism is malassezia furfur usually their hyphae are a bit thicker 2 to 3 micron in thickness they are usually short and sometimes curved hyphae and their spores are 2 to 8 micron in diameter and round in shape in candidiasis spongiotic or subcorneal pustular dermatos dermatitis with mixed dermal infiltration is found sometimes erosion of the epithelium are also present here we get pseudo hyphae that is 2 to 4 micron in thickness and sometimes uh, round to oval uh, budding yeast of 3 to 6 micron uh, in largest dimension now coming to dermatophytosis so dermatophytosis are uh, are the superficial skin infection uh, where the causative organism are the dermatophytes and dermatophytes are a group of molds filamentous structural morphology of fungus three genera of this imperfect fungi are epidermophyton which infects mainly epidermis and occasionally nail microsporum infects epidermis and hair and trichophyton infects epidermis hair and nail according to the natural habitat they are anthrophilic zoophilic and geophilic antinia is a clinical term to describe superficial fungal infection of skin mostly due to dermatophytes now let us see uh, common dermatophytes affecting different anatomical region of body so tinea capitis is a, a dermatophytosis of uh, scalp skin and hair commonest organisms are trichophyton transurans and uh, then tinea facii uh, where the causative fungi are trichophyton mentagrophytes and trichophyton rubrum and when it affects the coarse hair bearing that is beard and mustache of face that organism is uh, trichophyton verrucosum in tinea corporis that is the dermatophytosis of uh, whole body uh, non coarse hair bearing part of the body that causative organisms are trichophyton rubrum, trichophyton mentragophytes, epidermophyton flocculosum, and trichophyton concentricum. Tinea manus, which is the tinea of uh, hand, is caused by trichophyton rubrum, and tinea pedis, that of foot, and tinea unguium that of uh, nail are caused by uh, fungi trichophyton rubrum trichophyton mentagrophytes and and epidermophyton flocculosum now coming to tinea of hair bearing skin so tinea of course hair bearing skin that is tinea capitis so dermatophytosis of skin and hair of scalp uh, clinically, it presents as scale and crust, and when it's caused by uh, trichophyton transurans, which is a commonest uh, fungal fungi causing this, uh, in addition, we get broken hair and marked inflammation. Trichomycosporum uh, canis, which is a zoophilic and thereby causing mark, much more marked inflammation, and Mycosporum odumni, uh, which is anthrophilic. So, usually anthrophilics are presenting uh, with absent inflammation uh, are also affecting uh, causing tinea capitis and they show a band of bright green fluorescence in hair in wood light carrion cell c uh, which is a, a special type of presentation and presents a severe inflammatory boggy plaque caused by microsporum canis and trichophyton other than trichophyton squenleni showing pale green fluorescence and uh, no fluorescence in wood light and this carrion cells are also associated with uh, uh, presence with uh, posterior cervical lymphadenopathy and favus which is a severe form of deep seated oozing nodule or abscess uh, with scutula that is perifollicular hyperkeratotic crust 
followed by destruction of hair and scarring alopecia uh, is caused by trichophytons coenlini. Tinea barbi, as I have told, that uh, uh, is caused by infection by zoophilic trichophyton verrucosum and trichophyton mentagrophytes, of coarse hair bearing beard and mustache, causing carrion like boggy nodular inflammation. Now coming to the histopathology. So when the, the lesion is mainly affecting the coarse hair bearing, so significant histomorphological changes are concentrating on the follicles. So infection of follicles, we see that starts with colonization of stratum corneum of perifollicular epidermis. Then the hyphae extends down the follicle, invades the hair and penetrates the cuticle first in subcuticular portion of the cortex under the hair surface and penetrates deeply into the cortex up to the upper limit of zone of keratinization. So you can see here the rounded box like arthrospores and hyphal elements in and may be found in the shaft or penetrating the surface of the hair shaft and forming a sheath around it. This is the tinea of glabrous skin. So you know the tinea fasciae is one entity which uh, presents as persistent eruption of red macules. Trichophyton rubrum is a usual uh, fungal organism causing this lesion and Trichophyton mentagrophytes and tonsurans are also other causative organisms. And tinea corporis usually presents as a large erythematous patch with central clearing and arcuate or polycyclic scaly border. Trichophyton rubrum is the commonest uh, organism, uh, fungal organism causing this. Microsporum canis, uh, when uh, causes this lesion, they produce more inflammation and annular lesion with uh, central clearing. Trichophyton mentagrophytes causes few annular lesion with little or no central clearing and trichophyton verrucosum which is the occasionally causing this lesion uh, produces grouped follicular pustule and this is called aguminate folliculitis and trichophyton rubrum when causes this lesion uh, they present as nodular granulomatous perifolliculitis that is called majocis granuloma caused by rupture of an infected follicle, typically of lower extremity. Tinea cruris, sharply demarcated erythematous patch or thin plaque in the groin, may spread to perianal or perineal region and causative fungi is trichophyton rubrum or trichophyton mentagrophytes or echino, uh, e flocculosum. Now, tinea feet, tinea of feet, that is pedis, tinea pedis and tinea of hand, manners, usually uh, caused by trichophyton rubrum and they present as relatively non inflammatory scaling or plant. In case of uh, feet, it is presenting as plantar uh, scaling on plantar feet. When tinea pedis is caused by trichophyton mentagrophytes or e flocculosum epidermophyton flocculosum the it presents as interdigital maceration or plantar moccasin scale or vesicobulous lesions tinea anguium is the dermatophytic infection of nail which will be uh, which will be discussed uh, a bit in more detail uh, when i'll discuss onychomycosis now coming to the histopathology of glabrous skin. So fungi occur in the horny layer of epidermis and they usually do not invade hair or hair particle except trichophyton rubrum or trichophyton verrucosum causing which causes perifolliculitis. Fungi may be also so less in number or so small to be detected even when treated with special stains like PAS or GMS. But when they are in sufficient numbers, they can be recognized as faintly basophilic refractile structures in HNE sections. 
5 e are seen in infection with microsporum or trichophyton but chain of spores are seen in infection with epidermophyton flocculosum here you can see the friendly basophilic refractile structures body fungal bodies present in horny layer between two zones of cornified cells upper orthokeratotic and lower parakeratotic zone and which produces a sandwich sandwich sign then in absence of demonstrable fungi the histologic picture of glabrous skin is not diagnostic there may be also present of acute subacute or chronic spongiotic dermatitis depending on degree of reaction of the skin majestic granuloma which i have mentioned uh, is to, uh, to be discussed under uh, uh, this uh, histology caused by trichophyton rubrum and shows numerous hyphae and spores within hair and hair follicle the spore size is smaller that is 2 micron uh, in spatial stain and uh, and uh, in inflammatory infiltrate of the dermis the spore size is larger that is 6 micron fungal elements enter in the dermis through break in follicular wall the dermal processes show inflammatory infiltrate of lymphoid cells macrophages epithelial cells multinucleated giant cells and sometimes central necrosis with occasional suppuration agmenate folliculitis caused by trichophyton verrucosum i have told this uh, so shows hyphae and spores within hair and hair follicles in pa stain section dermis around the hair follicles contain no fungi acute or chronic inflammatory infiltrate predominant according to the severity of infection prominence of plasma cells and microabscess and small aggregates of foreign body giant cells is well established is found in well established lesions now coming to onychomycosis so it is a nail infection due to any fungus including dermatophytes then it is called tinea unguium and non dermatophytes like candida species and Cytalidium and Aspergillus, Niger, Cladosporium, Alternaria, Fusarium, and Acerimonium and Scopulariopsis are considered as contaminants in all except in immunosuppressed persons. Clinical presentation is usually hyperkeratosis and onycholysis. And dermatophytic infection is associated with uh, up to 90% of mycotic toenail and 50% of fingernail infection. And criteria for diagnosis of non dermatophyte onychomycosis are presence of hyphae in infected subangual debris, persistent failure to culture recognized dermatophytes, and positive culture of non dermatophytes. The clinical types are distal and lateral subungual onychomycosis that is dlso most common only uh, common including the this is the most common presentation including the hiv patient and dermatophytes causing this lesion is trichophyton rubrum second one is superficial white onychomycosis that is swo more common in HIV patient, trichophyton mentagrophytes are the organism causing this. And proximal subungual onychomycosis, that is PSO, which is less common, presenting can be also a presenting sign of HIV patients. Trichophyton rubrum is a dermatophyte causing this lesion. And then comes the candida infection. And the paranychia, hyperkeratosis, and onycholysis are presentation of candida onychomycosis tinea unguium in tinea unguium nail plate biopsy is uh, potentially the method of choice for the diagnosis microscopic examination of koh mounds or culture of nail fragments often establish the diagnosis of onychomycosis but if the infection is in nail bed or in lower portion of nail plate there is a chance of false negative result 
nail clipping or nail punch biopsy may reveal fungi on diastase pass stained section. Here you can see the histologic pattern common in nail plate biopsies of panchomycosis. So from this pattern uh, clinical presentation we have seen that uh, there may be superficial infection uh, where we get the mycelial elements these are the mycelial elements in outer layer of the nail plate and stained in uh, visible in uh, PA stain and GM, GMS stain uh, section infection but infection of undersurface of the nail plate uh, where past stain sections reveal the mycelial elements inflammatory infiltrate of lymphocytes and neutrophils and sedum and keratotic debris are seen and presence of psoriasiform hyperplasia spongiosis and hyperkeratosis in nail bed or nail flow de fold epithelium biopsy makes identification of fungal elements critical uh, for the correct diagnosis now coming to the candida infection so lack of nail plate invasion ovoid cyst forms yeast forms that is 3 to 6 micron in diameter are seen along the undersurface of the nail plate and mimic the in response the appearance mimics the psoriasiform changes and inflammatory response of onychomycosis caused by dermatophytes now coming to the disease caused by malassezia furfur so two forms as i have told that petrius is versicolor and petrius forum folliculitis when the clinical in petrius is versicolor it infects the epidermis and in petrius forum folliculitis the organism infects the hair follicle in in petrius petrius is versicolor also falsely named as tinea versicolor but uh, since it is not caused by dermatophytes this is a misnomer it is better to say that petrius is versicolor so clinical presentation usually are multiple round to oval pink to light brown patches with fine white scales over the trunk and upper extremity and uh, histopathologically found abundant fungus in the horny layer as i have told that these fungus are short curved and bit uh, thicker than the dermatophytes uh, their basophilic structure in h and e section spaghetti and meatball like appearance uh, representing the dimorphic form are also seen in keratin layer and there is minimal inflammatory response slight hyperkeratosis occasionally slight spongiosis or minimal superficial perivascular lymphocytic infiltrate in petriosporum folliculitis uh, clinical presentation is pruritic eruption of acneform follicular papule and pustule on trunk and arm of otherwise healthy host histopathology reveals hyperkeratosis and dilatation resulting from follicular plugging of infundibulum by keratinous material there is disruption of sometimes there is disruption of follicular epithelium and causing peri infundibular abscess pas stain section reveals diastase resistance spheric to oval singly budding yeast uh, uh, organism of 2 to 4 micron diameter here representing the pictures in the left side we can see the dimorphic form of this fungus in the uh, keratin layer that uh, ball like structure and this spaghetti so spaghetti of meat ball in keratinous layer in petrius is versicolor and here the infundibular follicle presenting the spores now coming to candidiasis candida albicantis is a dimorphic fungus the different clinical pathological entities are acute mucocutaneous candidiasis chronic mucocutaneous candidiasis disseminated candidiasis and candida onychomycosis that is the infection of nail and characterized by separation of nail plate from the nail bed which i have already discussed under the heading of uh, onychomycosis now coming to acute mucocutaneous candidiasis 
so predisposing conditions are environmental changes like local hot humid conditions systemic uh, changes like antibiotic or corticosteroid therapy and there is also susceptibility of uh, specific hosts uh, who are having solid organ transplant and extreme of age antibiotic therapy malignancy chemotherapy endocrine having endocrinopathies like diabetes mellitus or Cushing syndrome and disorders of immunity including hiv and the clinical variants are erosio interdigitalis blastomycetica candida vaginalis paranychia candida intertrigo and thras now coming to the clinical features so in intertrigenous lesion erythematous often eroded patches and thin plaques often with peripheral erythematous macules and papules are there a mucous membrane lesion erythematous patches or white plaques having glistening erythematous on the surface and and congenital cutaneous candidiasis uh, which is caused by ascending intrauterine infection of vaginal candidiasis uh, so widely scattered macules and papillary vesicles and pustules are found and uh, in neonatal form of acute candidiasis uh, which usually occurs during the infection during the passage through the birth canal uh, causes oral candidiasis and dermatitis now coming to the histopathology so cutaneous and mucous membrane lesions so similar features uh, there is subcorneal vesicle or pustule and uh, fungal organism that is pseudohyphae and ovoid spores present in stratum corneum pseudohyphae are 2 to 4 micron in diameter show, show branching at 90 degree angle with uh, constriction constriction at the septa and at the branch point Ovoid spores are usually 3 to 6 micron in size. In chronic mucocutaneous candidiasis, it's a chronic and recurrent candidial infection of skin, nail, and mucous membrane. Uh, the autosomal dominant and uh, recessive pattern of inheritance have been identified, and uh, there may be association uh, of uh, endocrinopathies or immune deficiencies. In some of chronic mucocutaneous candidiasis cases, uh, usually there is no systemic involvement. Most common type of chronic mucocutaneous candidiasis is seen in patients with AIDS who have often have recurrent candidial infection of mouth and perianal area. And oral candidiasis early sign of uh, can be early sign of immunosuppression, and if it persists. The, which is indicative of esophageal candidiasis frequently observed on the surface of oral hairy leukoplakia and clinical features like uh, acute and uh, distinguished uh, by clinical course so the cutum chronic mucoidinous candidiasis are showing a similar clinical presentation uh, as acute but the clinical course is different and uh, candida granuloma is a rare clinical variant uh, which requires a special mention where chronic mucocutaneous candidiasis begins at childhood uh, clinically presents as numerous hyperkeratotic crusted plaques on the face and scalp but occasionally elsewhere and coming to the histopathology so uh, the chronic is almost similar to acute uh, form of cutaneous candidiasis but here in candida granuloma requires special mention uh, having pronounced epidermal uh, papillomatosis hyperkeratosis and dense infiltration of lymphocytes neutrophil plasma cells and multinucleated giant cells the infiltrate may extend into the subcutis fungal elements seen in stratum corneum and in some instances also found in hair uh, viable epidermis and dermis now disseminated candidiasis as a clinical feature uh, is uh, though it is one of the leading cause of hospital acquired blood stream infection cutaneous involvement is only seen in 13 percent of cases and uh, cutaneous lesion of disseminated candidiasis are erythematous or villaceous papular nodules with central clearing fever rash and diffuse muscle tenderness this is a triad in an immunocompromised host should raise the suspicion of disseminated candidiasis 
identification of candidate species by culture poses a problem because all yeast cultures that form germ tubes and chlamydospores by generalization are designated as candida albicans. So early diagnosis of disseminated candidiasis by skin biopsy may be critical. But biopsy of a tender muscle infiltrated by the yeast may help to establish the diagnosis. Now histopathologically, epidermis is usually unaffected. Aggregates of hyphae and spores are found in association with mild dermal inflammation. Sometimes there may be leukocytoclastic vasculitis in cutaneous manifestation of disseminated candidiasis. Uh, there may be occasional uh, microabscess formation. The aggregates of candida often are small and uh, in step section, uh, they may be revealed by special fungal stains. Now coming to deep and secondary dermatophycosis. So uh, the clinicopathological entities are primary deep cutaneous dermatomycosis, then incidental cutaneous dermatomycosis that primarily involve other organs and systemic fungal infections. So, uh, what are the causative fungi uh, deep and second, in deep and secondary dermatomycosis? So, primary deep cutaneous dermatomycosis, the causative fungi are aspergillosis, zygomycosis, few hypomycosis, rhinosporidiasis, logomycosis, chromoblastomycosis, and fungal mycetoma. And in incidental cutaneous dermatomycosis that primarily involve other organs are blastomycosis, cochiridomycosis, histoplasma, lobo loboi. And the systemic fungal infection causing cutaneous manifestations are disseminated candidiasis, about which I have already told. Then comes cryptococcosis, aspergillosis, and zygomycosis. Now, the fungal morphology in deep and secondary dermatophysis are hyphial form or spore form. So hyphial form are uh, found in aspergillosis, zygomycosis, subcutaneous few hypomycosis and alternariosis. Uh, spore forms are found in North American blastomycosis, paracochididomycosis, lobomycosis, chromoblastomycosis, cochididomycosis, Cryptococcosis, histoplasmosis, porotrichosis, eumycetoma, and rhinosporitiasis. But this general categorization is not mutually exclusive. In some cases, in some uh, organism, at least with some fungal or organism, we may find both fungal and spore form. Uh, Alternariosis is one example. Sometimes in uh, zygomycosis, uh, we can find spores also. Uh, very rarely. Now, coming to aspergillosis. So, aspergillus species are ubiquitous in environment. Severe invasive aspergillosis typically involves lung and is usually seen only in immunocompromised hosts. Aspergillus fumigatus is the most common cause of uh, both colonization and invasive aspergillosis followed by uh, in frequency by aspergillus flavus and aspergillus niger. Cutaneous aspergillosis may occur as a primary infection or may be secondary to disseminated aspergillosis. There may be one or more macules, vacuoles, plaques, or hemorrhagic bulla that may rapidly progress into necrotic ulcers with the surface wavy black S shell. Primary cutaneous infection has been seen in patients with AIDS or may colonize on burn or surgical wounds and subsequently invade the viable tissue and prognosis is generally good. Secondary cutaneous aspergillosis usually associated with invasive lung disease show multiple scattered lesion as a result of embolic and hematogenous spread and has a poor prognosis. Now coming to the histopathology, as I have told that uh, his, 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 uh, pseudo epithelomatous hyperplasia and epidermal uh, hyperplasia is not characteristic uh, here in aspergillosis. And numerous aspergillus hyphae are seen in the dermis. Hyphae seen in hematoxyl neosin stain sections of, and occasionally pass stain sections are methanamine silver staining may be required. The hyphae which measures about 2 to 4 micron in diameter are often arranged in a radiatic fashion are septed and show branching at acute angle. Spores are absent. 
and the characteristic finding which I have already mentioned um, that angioinversion by the hyphae and it is very characteristic and may be seen around areas of ischemic necrosis with very little inflammation. In other cases, there may be an acute inflammatory reaction with polymorphonuclear leukocyte in addition to lymphocytes and histiocytes. Here you can see the hyphae uh, form of aspergillus. Hyphae are uh, showing uh, branching at acute angle here. This is another section, another microphotograph showing the aspergillus hyphae. Now coming to zygomycosis. So mucormycosis and pheohypomycosis. Causative molds are mucorale and enteromophthorale. These are the two orders. And the term mucormycosis describes infection with rhizopus or mucor. Uh, which are two medically significant genera. Infections with these organisms are aggressive and often occur in ketotic, diabetic or in burns. Atrogenic immunosuppression, chronic renal failure, hematopoietic malignancy and AIDS are predisposing condition. Enteropthoracy may cause chronic cutaneous and subcutaneous infection in otherwise healthy hosts. Three main forms exist rhinocerebral, primary cutaneous and chronic subcutaneous zygomycosis. Rhinocerebral form is a fulminant infection of paranasal sinuses that quickly spreads to contiguous structures such as skin, nose, orbit and brain. And primary cutaneous zygomycosis uh, occurs in early as a pustule or blister that soon ulcerate and form eschars. And cutaneous lesion may also be seen as a result of embolization or uh, infarction in patient with systemic zygomycosis. Chronic subcutaneous zygomycosis occurs in tropical and subtropical areas in otherwise healthy people. Lesions most uh, commonly occur on the face and uh, are slowly enlarging painless form swelling in the dermis. Now coming to the histopathology of zygomycosis. The histopathological changes in zygomycosis are primarily dermal. The hallmark of zygomycosis is vascular invasion by very large, long, non-septed hyphae with thrombosis and infarction. Hyphae branch at 90 degree angles. The hyphae are thin walled so that they may be twisted or collapsed and often appear ring shaped or oval in cross section or tangential section. They are often easily located even in routinely stained section because of their very large size up to 30 micron in diameter, although they may be visualized even better in PES and TMA stained sections. Rarely spores may be found. Here you can see that uh, zygomycosis, uh, where uh, 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 zygomycosis basically is a mucormycosis. Where H and E stained sections of the dermis and epidermis and subcutaneous fat shows infarction. This area has got infarcted and also some lymphohistocytic cell and neutrophilic infiltrate are there in the periphery. And, uh, and the, here you can see the H and E stained section shows irregular branching twisted collapsed hyphae. Here you can see branching at acute angle of uh, mucormycosis. Now coming to subcutaneous uh, few hypomycosis. Few hypomycosis is a subcutaneous or systemic infection caused by dermatitious mycelia forming uh, fungi. You know that dermatitia uh, are uh, fungi which causes pig pigments and dematicious fungi are molds or yeast with melanin pigment in their wall. Fungi responsible for pseudo uh, for few hypomycosis are bipolaris, phyalophora, alternaria and exophyala. Subcutaneous few hypomycosis typically presents as solitary abscess or nodule on extremity of an adult male. A history of trauma or splinter can sometimes be elicited. Now coming to the histopathology. 
Prostilate foci of suppurative granulomatous inflammation. There may be large cavity formation with surrounding fibrosis, fibrous capsule formation, and containing polymorphonuclear leukocytes, so called pseudo pseudohypomycotic cyst with surrounding granulomatous reaction. The organisms are found within the cavity at, at its age, often within histiocytes. The hyphae often have irregularly placed branches and show constrictions around their septa that may cause them to resemble pseudohyphae or yeast form, but true yeast forms are rare. Mycelia are more loosely arranged. Pigment is not always obvious and may be highlighted using fontanus stains. Here you can see the hyphae uh, of uh, pheohypomycosis. So, so they are so constricted that they looks like uh, pseudo hyphae and some budding yeast form uh, are also there and you can see that their pigmentation so this is uh, pigmented hyphal form now coming to cutaneous alternariosis so pigmented again these are caused by pigmented hyphae may also be considered as uh, pheohypomycosis primary cutaneous infection may occur following trauma by colonization of a pre-existing lesion rarely by hematogen they spread by hematogenous root most commonly from pulmonary infection caused by inhalation of the organism patients are often debilitated immunocompromised or recipient of immunosuppressive therapy. In normal healthy person, cutaneous alternances are nothing but contaminant. The clinical features, uh, morphologically, the lesions are so variable as to be non-specific. Include, they include uh, crusted ulcers, verrucous or granulomatous or multilocular lesions and subcutaneous nodules. Histopathology reveals fungi, uh, mainly in the deeper layer of the dermis and in the subcutaneous region in hematogenous and traumatogenic form. Localized predominantly in the epidermis in case uh, in which alternaria colonizes in the pre-existing lesion. Separative granulomatous reaction in the dermis can be found. Variable pseudoepithelomatous epidermal hyperplasia and ulceration are also seen. And uh, the fungal organism are broad branching, brown septed hyphae of 5 to 7 micron thick, large round to oval, often doubly contoured spores measuring 3 to 10 micron in diameter are also seen. Now coming to North American blastomycosis. So uh, the organism is blastomyces dermatitis. This occurs in three forms, primary cutaneous inoculation blastomycosis, pulmonary blastomycosis, and systemic blastomycosis. In primary cutaneous inoculation, blastomycosis is rare and occurs almost exclusively as a laboratory or autopsy room infection, where it uh, presents as indurated ulcers and sanctiform solitary lesion. Uh, sometimes there may be associated lymphangitis and lymphadenitis, so thereby producing lymphadenopathy in the uh, uh, in the region. In systemic blastomycosis, the lungs are the primary site of infection. Granulomatous and suppurative lesions may occur in many different organs, commonly in skin, 75% uh, of the patients, followed by bones, uh, the male genital system, the oral and nasal mucosa, and the central nervous system. They may be solitary or numerous. They occur either as verrucous lesion, uh, the more common type, or as an ulcerative lesion, which is rare. Now, coming to the histopathology of blastomycosis. Early lesions of blastomycosis demonstrates dermal inflammatory infiltrate of polymorphonuclear leukocytes with numerous organisms followed by occasional giant cells. Later, a verrucous histologic pattern with pseudoepitheliomatous hyperplasia is develops, and this is characteristic. A biopsy from the active border of verrucous lesion will best demonstrate the diagnostic histopathology. 
The spores are found in histologic sections, usually in clusters of neutrophils or within giant cells. On higher magnification, the spores are seen to have a thick wall which gives them a double contoured appearance. They measure 8 to 15 micron in diameter and average is 10 micron. Spores are best visualized in section stained with uh, PAS and metamine silver in routine stained sections. Here you can see the pseudo epithelimatous extensive pseudo epithelimatous pattern of epidermal reaction and inflammatory uh, cells are there in the dermis. Here you can see mixture of uh, cells including the giant cells having this uh, spore and here the higher magnification is showing that double contoured uh, spore and uh, within the cytoplasm of a giant cell. Now coming to paracoccoidomycosis. This is caused by paracoccoides brasiliensis. Another name is South American uh, blastomycosis. The first clinical manifestation is usually lesion in the oropharynx and on the gingiva, and which uh, then uh, then they uh, spread uh, that there is uh, uh, involvement of the lymphatics and also uh, cervical lymph node. Uh, involvement uh, which then becomes ulcerated and uh, ulcerated lesions around mouth and nose uh, slowly develops and there is extensive cervical lymphadenopathy so these are the uh, clinical presentation cutaneous and mucosal lesion uh, reveals granulomatous infiltrate showing epithelioid and giant cells in association with acute inflammatory infiltrate and abscess formation spores may lie within the giant cells or free in infiltrate, especially in the abscess, and they are best demonstrated by PAS reaction or in methamine silver. Pseudoepithelomatous hyperplasia may be marked. Many of the spores present in the tissue show only single, usually narrow best with, without, with or without buds. In rare, in the rare, the spores with multiple buds distributed over the whole uh, surface of the a uh, ball shaped fungus can give the appearance of a marine pilot wheel appearance and this is a very characteristic of the uh, spores uh, appearance in tissue section now coming to lobomycosis extremely indolent fungal infection the causative fungus is loboa loboi and uh, they present as a smooth nodular lesion that resembles keloid on ear face and extremity Histopathology reveals the dermis with extensive infiltrate of macrophages and large giant cells separated from uh, usually atrophic epidermis uh, by a grain zone. Scattered lymphocytes and plasma cells are present, but neutrophils are not typically present. Numerous fungal spores lie both within these cells and outside them, and because the fungus does not stain with hematoxyl myosin, it gives a sieve like appearance. On section with uh, PAS reaction or with methanamine silver, the fungus spores possesses thick capsule. Here is the thin epidermis, and there is a free lesion free grain zone. And this is the lesion showing multiple spores along with the macrophages, showing an overall sieve like appearance. Now, coming to chromo blastomycosis so slowly progressive cutaneous mycosis caused by pigmented dematiseous fungi that occurs as a round non budding form in tissue section since they are non budding so uh, it is better to call them chromomycosis than chromoblastomycosis so they present as variably pruritic papular nodular or verrucous plaque like lesion in lower extremity and histopathology reveals cutaneous chromoblastomycosis uh, uh, as uh, North American blastomycosis in, uh, in both uh, demonstrate lichenoid granulomatous inflammatory pattern. There is pseudoepithelomatous epithelial hyperplasia and an extensive dermal infiltrate composed of many epithelial histocytes along with occasional multinucleated giant cells, small abscesses and clusters of neutrophils and variable number of lymphocytes and plasma cells and eosinophils are also present. Fungal spores found within giant cells as well as free in tissue, especially in abscesses, appears as contained 
conspicuous dark brown thick walled ovoids or spheric and may lie either singly or in chains resembling copper pens. Because of their brown pigmentation, the spores can be easily seen without the use of special stains. Here you can see the copper pens like appearance of the spores within the giant cell and they can and they are surrounded by inflammatory cells. In coccidiomycosis, uh, the three forms are there. The primary cutaneous inoculation coccidiomycosis, very rare like blastomycosis occurs as a laboratory or autopsy room infection. But unlike blastomycosis, it has also been found as a naturally occurring infection that is injuries by contaminated thorn, thorns or splinters. They present as tender ulcerated uh, nodule uh, which uh, then gets ulcerated and uh, there may be plaque which also may be ulcerated. Pulmonary coccidiomycosis is the most common form. Uh, arthrospores are inhaled by the host. In systemic coccidiomycosis follows primary pulmonary infection. Some studies have shown uh, a association with HLA subtypes A9 and B5 as well as association with the ABO blood group B. And the coccidiodin skin test consisting of intradermal injection of uh, 0.1 ml of 1 is to 100, 1 in 100 dilution of coccidin becomes positive within a few weeks of primary pulmonary infection. Histopathology, we see the primary cutaneous inoculation coccidiomycosis, the dense dermal infiltration of inflammatory cells consisting of neutrophils, eosinophils, lymphoid cells and plasma cells with occasional giant cells. There may be formation of small abscess and spores and, and hyphae uh, in some cases uh, are present. Regional limb nodes show well developed granulomas having epithelioid and giant cells. Spores are found within and outside the giant cells. In systemic coccidiomycosis, verrucous nodules and plaques on skin resemble those of North American blastomycosis, so less tendency towards abscess formation and caseous necrosis may occur. Subcutaneous abscesses with central areas of necrosis surrounded by granulomas of tuberculoid type and numerous pores are present extracellularly as well as intracellularly in the giant cell forms of cells of the granulomas. The past shoes in, found in few cases show presence of spores within them. Primary pulmonary coccidiomycosis and nodules like skin lesions are seen having some histological appearance as those in idiopathic erythema nodosum. Now coming to cryptococcosis. So causative uh, fungi uh, is uh, east, uh, uh, cryptococcus neoformans found in extra excreta of birds, pigeons, and chickens, and is sprayed by aerosol centers. It enters the body via respiratory tract, can cause asymptomatic or asymptomatic infection, followed by hematogenous spread. Primary inoculation cryptococcus is extremely rare. And most common clinical manifestation, uh, systemic infection uh, is uh, meningitis in the form of meningitis. 10 to 15 percent of the cases of systemic cryptococcus is present with cutaneous lesions. Cutaneous lesions consist of papules, pustules, and herpetiform vesicles or nodules, infiltrated plaques, subcutaneous swelling, or abscesses or ulcers. Histopathology reveals two types of reaction. One is gelatinous, having numerous organisms, uh, uh, that is the spores of 4 to 12 micron size and very little tissue reaction. On the other hand, if there is granulomatous reaction, this pronounced uh, reaction of gra having granulomas with necrosis, but the organisms uh, are of smaller, the spore size is 2 to 4 micron in size, uh, and they are present. The spore stains with PAs, methamine silver, and shows a dark brown or black colors with um, from Mason's fontana stain. 
which completely disappears with melanin bleach. The capsule does not stain with HNE or PAS reaction. Acid mucopolysaccharides in capsule stains metachromatically purple with methylene blue, blue with alcyon blue, and red with mucicarmine stain. Now coming to histoplasmosis. This is found throughout the world and the largest uh, endemic focus being the central eastern United States. This occurs in three forms. Primary cutaneous inoculation histoplasmosis, very rare, benign and self-limited, occurs as lab infection, presents as Sankriform syndrome, and primary pulmonary histoplasmosis, this is a common form uh, caused by inhalation, usually asymptomatic, but flu-like presentation may occur. Chronic form occurs in pre-existing lung disease resulting in cavity formation. Then disseminated histoplasmosis shows variable clinical presentation. There, are, there may be extensive involvement of reticular endothelial system. Adrenal involvement leads to adrenal insufficiency. Gastrointestinal ulcer, meningitis, and endocarditis are common. Cutaneous lesions occur in approximately 6% of this disseminated histoplasmosis cases. Oral lesions are not uncommon. Now, clinically, uh, and cutaneous features are ulcers, often with annular, hipped up border papule, nodule, and large plaque-like lesions. Papules may umbilicate, uh, molluscum contagiosum like tender, red, nodule due to paniculitis may be found um, and uh, generalized pruritic uh, edematous uh, 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 patches, which is very rare finding, may also occur. And non-specific features like erythema nodosum or erythema multiforme may be found. Here is the histopathology, the presence of spores 2 to 4 micron in diameter, spores within macrophage and uh, giant cells. So here you can see the spores uh, within the macrophages and giant cells. The spores are visible in HNE and gram and GIMSA stains. And they are round oval bodies surrounded by clear space, uh, which was interpreted as capsule. But silver stains and electron microscopic studies uh, revealed that there is no capsule. And basically, this represents the inner inner part represents the cell wall, and the outer part of this um, non-stained area represents granul granular substances, which separates the it from the cytoplasm of the macrophages or giant cells. In acute form, there is little reaction in skin other than presence of parasites. In chronic form, we can get saporitic granuloma, a foci of necrosis with or without giant cells. Now coming to sporotrichosis. Infection with S skin key are minor or asymptomatic and not recognized clinically as sporotrich as sporotrichin skin test shows a positive reaction in up to 10% of the population in certain areas. Clinically, primary cutaneous infection are of fixed cutaneous and the lymphocutaneous form. Both results from direct inoculation at the site of minor trauma. Systemic sporotrichosis, although rare, occurs particularly in persons with a depressed immune response from pulmonary infection. The lymphocutaneous form, uh, we found painless papule uh, on a finger or hand that ulcerate. Subsequently, a chain of asymptomatic nodules appear along the limb vessels of the draining, the limb vessels draining the area. Sporotrichoid, that is called the sporotrichoid spread. These lymphatic nodules may undergo separation. Fixed cutaneous form. In fixed cutaneous form, a solitary plaque or occasionally a group of lesions is seen on arm or the face having superficial crusting or verrucous surface. Systemic sporotrichosis may be unifocal or multifocal. In unifocal, the skin involvement usually does not occur. It involves the lung, but in multifocal form of systemic sporotrichosis nearly always shows widely scattered skin lesion, which starts as a nodules or as subcutaneous abscess that ulcerates later. The histopathology here 
we see early primary cutaneous lesion of sporotrichosis usually show non specific inflammation but long standing clinically verrucous lesions show hyperplastic epidermis with small intra epidermal or dermal lymphoplasmocytic infiltrate with small abscess eosinophils giant cells and small granulomas often associated with asteroid bodies later coalescence of these lesions produces a characteristic arrangement of infiltrate in three zones these include a central suppurative zone composed of neutrophils surrounding it is a tuberculoid zone with epithelioid cells and multinucleated histiocytes and peripheral to it is a round cell zone consisting of lymphoid cells and plasma cells lymphocutaneous porotrichosis shows scattered granulomas with an inflammatory infiltrate that enlarge and form irregularly shaped suppurative granulomas and eventually a large abscess spores of s skin key are round 4 to 6 micron in diameter stain more strongly uh, at the periphery and have single or multiple buds it is very difficult to demonstrate them even in positive areas so i see demonstration of those spores are of much help asteroid bodies are visible in sections stained with h and e and central spores of 5 to 10 micron in diameter surrounded by radiating elongations of homogeneous eosinophilic material is known as splendor hopefully phenomenon has been thought to represent the deposition of antigen antibody complexes and debris from host inflammatory cells now coming to eumycetoma a fungal mycetoma a number of fungi and filamentous bacteria may cause an indolent local infection characterized by induration associated with draining uh, sinuses these diverse agents may have clinically identical presentation that have been collectively called mycetoma the term actinomycetoma refers to such infection when filamentous bacteria uh, bacteria are causing the, this type of lesions and eumycetoma is caused by a group of true fungi with thick septed hyphae including petrilidium boidi and madurella grisa and madurella mycetomatis more common in tropical regions differentiation between actinomycetoma and eumycetoma is important because they respond to different treatments eumycetoma is a persistent invariably progressive local infection without a tendency for systemic spread the infection starts as a subcutaneous nodule or multiple subcutaneous nodules usually on the foot at the site of trauma thus the term madura foot has been used synonymously with mycetoma the nodules eventuate in abscess and draining sinuses gradually the muscle and tendons are damaged and osteomyelitis also develops grossly visible surface granules or grains which are tightly knit clusters of organism are discharged from the draining sinuses and these granules are black in case of eumycetoma caused by dematicious fungi that is m grisa and m mycetomatis whereas they are colorless in eumycetoma caused by petrilidium boiti now coming to the histopathology early phase of this disease uh british produces tissue surrounding the abscess is composed of lymphoid cells plasma cells histiocytes and fibroblasts in late phase fibroblasts may predominate the diagnosis is established by finding of the sulfa granules most of the granules measures between 0.5 to 2 mm in diameter and are visible macroscopically these granules of both eumycetoma and actinomycetoma stains with pas reaction and with methanamine silver granules of eumycetoma composed of septed hyphae and granules of actinomycetoma consist of fine branching filamentous or bacillary form that are 1 micron in thickness filaments of actinomycetoma are gram stain positive the hyphae in grains of eumycetoma are gram stain negative here you can see the h and e stain section of sulfur granules so this is the sulfur granules in the low power view and uh, is a purulent and the surrounding purulent area and granulation tissue is present and this section is showing that uh, composed largely of septed hyphae of petrilidium boidi in as 
and GMS stain. And this is a fungal mycetoma caused by dematiseous uh, fungal mycetoma caused by dematiseous fungi. Here you can see the production of pigment. So from this above uh, histomorphological appearance and clinical presentation, uh, we can come to the diagnosis along with the identification of the fungi and thereby we can be able to diagnose the fungus, uh, fungal infection of skin and particularly with the aid of uh, the special stains and also an additional ancillary investigations which are available till date. So thank you. Uh, the, these are my references.